Uh, we're having an event the 21st and 22nd of this month, next Friday and Saturday. It's called We Forgive Tulsa. It's referencing the, uh, the, the race riot that they had in 1921. Oh. oh okay. And so my dad was actually uh, a part of that riot. Um, he was um, 18 years old at the time. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. So we're going there to do a reconciliation event. So this, this weekend, what we're doing is taking our, our quilt and we're going to be doing some things there. And uh, the meeting has, people are coming. You know, we're, we're here and we've been hearing a lot of the people come are coming to support, so that's good. Now, the purpose for doing that would be? Well, it's a We Forgive Tulsa. Okay, you said that. So we're, as African Americans, we're saying we forgive, and we believe that when we forgive and put that as first priority, sure. anything else that we're wanting, reparations, you know, God will, will, bless, will bless in that area. Mm -hmm. So, we're also giving a commendation to the mayor and the governor uh, saying we forgive as a family, but who, who gives us an wow. authority that's God. Yeah. You know, first of all, we have to forgive. So some of my culture is saying, well, who gives you the authority? First of all, my dad, <laughs> you know, he's a survivor okay. of the riot. You know, his house was burned down here. My great grandparents' house was burned. His stepdad was killed in the riot his bulldog and and so but he still taught to forgive so the three of us we did a lot of reconciliation around the world i see and wow yeah so that's, that's our point we're actually doing a starting a hashtag we forgive tulsa okay huh isn't it interesting that through three generations god is being redemptive yeah in all of it. and uh, very powerful it is it is. We had a wonderful meeting with them Wednesday at our little building in Hempstead. Oh, you've been there. You spoke yes. there. Oh, I sure have. Yeah, Carlton spoke last summer for us in Hempstead mm -hmm. at a. It's it's an amazing story. It's too long for me to tell, but we had a tremendous victory, which a giant versus it was a Goliath versus David story. Uh, we were fighting a landfill outside the city limits and it was going to ruin our aquifer, which is a very pure, good aquifer. Oh, yeah. And the Lord allowed us to fight that battle and to win, but he won it for us. And it took seven years. Seven years. And yeah. it was seven years almost to the day to when we had a reconciliation event at the first plantation in Texas. So it was like a reward for us, really. But we wanted to have a Thanksgiving service, so that was held not by not by design. It was quote accidental. But that service was August 18th, which is the International Day of Reconciliation. So last summer we had a glorious joint service in our town, which we've never had before. Eight churches suspended yeah. their services and came together, gloriously multicultural <laughs> worship. It was pretty amazing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, this it's time for all of this. Hi, Paul. How are you? Listen, I'm not going to be Paul. able to stay, but just a few minutes. But I just couldn't help but at least just saying hi and making an appearance. So I'm going to st stick around for a few minutes, but I will have to sign off early. We'd like to introduce you to uh, Gwyneth Williams and her daughter. Hi. Oh, how are you? She's coming. That's her story. She's coming to say hello. Hello. Yeah. This is mother daughter. Oh, and, hello. Uh, they travel the world teaching about re uh, forgiveness. Oh, well, that's great. Oh, there he is. Okay, I thought you left. So uh, we had a meeting here in Hempstead with them Wednesday this week. Mm. So I invited them to join us today. I wanted them to talk a little bit about their ministry and what they do and about forgiveness. Yeah. Carry a quilt with 28 nations of pastors and leaders <laughs> from Asia. Yeah, it's huge. We'd love to have your signatures on it. From, from it, The Reconciliations Eagle. Oh, oh, that's yeah. right. She wanted to see a little bit of it. It's 100 feet it. long. But um, is it here? We can maybe show you a little bit of it. Um, but, um, you know, we've been, we've actually, last year, I think we've, East Africa, Tanzania, Uganda, 
and Kenya. We did a lot of reconciliation, you know, reconciliation with Adinga and Kenyatta. We, we speak mainly to pastors, bishops, and leaders. So God um, put us in a position to be able to speak into their lives. And we have all their signatures on the quilt as well. But being here from Tulsa, you know, we can relate and, um, you know, to what happened. But our whole bottom line is forgiveness and sharing, you know, that as we travel the world. So, yeah, so in a nutshell, that's what we do. And uh, of course, being my dad passed on the power of attorney for the Azusa. So we flow in all the gifts. So we do impartations and speak and we see people baptized with the Holy Spirit and the fire of God. <laughs> and we continue the legacy. My daughter, she's a Miss Global Ambassador, as well as a uh, Miss Oklahoma. So 100 years from the day my dad was born here, uh, she became Miss Oklahoma. This was Indian territory when my dad was born here. But because of everything that even happened within the, within the riot, um, there's a great recompense of reward. We see Jehovah Gamola. He is the God of recompense. Mm -hmm. And so 100 years later, she becomes a Miss Oklahoma. And mm -hmm. people said, you know, she would never get it because she was black. And, but God, you know, he knows what he's doing. So <laughs> in a nutshell, that's what we do. Um, she's still abstinent. She's uh, still a virgin. She's waiting for her first kiss for the altar. <laughs> So one of the things that we do also with our, our book tour we're on, Live Hope and Dream, uh, is for pastors and leaders. Our goal is to have um, a million people sign the abstinence contract. So, so that's what we do, but we're believing with the great response we're getting uh, here in Tulsa. Uh, we're gonna take the quilt to the cemetery well, some of the agenda now, which I believe is going to stir up a lot of strife, um, is look what the Ku Klux Klan did to North Tulsa. Um, they owe us, but we're going in. You had asked about the quilt. We're going to take the quilt as a um, reconciliation quilt that it is and hold it in front of the three spots where the graves are here in Tulsa and say, we forgive. And when we forgive, God will move, just like with her, 100 years later, she becomes a Miss Oklahoma. See, God is not the unforgiveness. So we're stepping up as African Americans to say we forgive. And who gives us the authority? My dad was a survivor and the blood of Jesus and the word of God. And so we actually, we leave here, we're going to the mayor's office. We have a commendation that we're picking up in the governor's office and we're giving him a commendation as well. And so that's kind of in a nutshell what we do. We just came back three, four months ago. We were gone two years <laughs> from America. And then the year before that, we were here a year and we were gone away two years. So we're kind of apostolic. When we go, we're gone. <laughs> so we're you have your quilt? Yes, we'll yeah. show you a little yeah. bit of the quilt. The we first part, this is Asia. Yeah. This is some of the part we we take this to um this is japan we actually have a, a portion here what this is here, of korea we actually took it up um on the amount and had an overnight prayer where they actually i don't know if you could see that but the pastor had his wife draw um where the three rivers connect we actually put the azusa oil that lamp oil we have into where the three rivers flow. So we, we have Japan, we have Korea, we have China. This is all in Chinese. We took it into Hong Kong and um, it's been to Singapore and, and all different parts of Asia. And then we took it before the Eiffel Tower. This is Great Britain, <laughs> France, took it to Spain, we took it to Wales. We actually took it to Evan Roberts uh, Church and one of the descendants there who's been there signed it, but it goes on. It's 100 feet, feet long, <laughs> all across it. You know, have people from everywhere. We have Argentina. We spent three months there. Colombia. <laughs> we have lots of pastors from 
So this is the Columbia P. <laughs> There's the circle. The, this is Argentina here. You see, we have Uruguay. And we're skipping some of the places. Can you guys can you see it? It's yes. <laughs> Can't see the detail, but we can see the. <laughs> The quill, yeah. yeah. Let's see if we could find. Uh, oh, yeah, they just signed the other day. We haven't sewn that on yet. And then, of course, we spent five months last year and three, five months, three weeks, six months in Israel. So we have the Holocaust survivors. They're the only ones on here who are not bishops or pastors or leaders. But we, I couldn't resist not having them sign the quilt. These are all pastors and leaders that have signed this, who said they would come together for unity. This is, of course, this is Kenya. We spent seven months in Kenya. This is Uganda we have here. We have Tanzania. Now, when we were in, uh, we went to the slave quarters in Tanzania. Have you been to Zanzibar? And we actually, we have him in the book. And this is one of the things we've been showing our African-American community here. This is Tipitu. And a lot of our people don't know who they are, who he is. Do you gentlemen know who he is? I don't. Tipitu no. was an African slave who sold us into slavery. He was the richest African king. And so what we did there was um, a prophetic act of repentance to forgive. He actually, when David Livingston came, he saw that for every African tusk that was sold here, I believe it was in, uh, was it Wisconsin that it went, they you know, used it for plastic and piano keys back then, but five Africans were dying. So he went back and of course, um, slavery was later abolished and he still sold us up until 1903, even after the transatlantic um, was against the law. But we had went into the slave quarters. Um, he later partnered with some Arabs. And we have this in the, and then we actually went into the cave where he hid the slaves and let them travel at night. Some of them walked seven years to get to destinations and stopped. And then they walked and walked and he continued to sell them. But we were part of a, um, in Uganda, they had 130 Africans from, from different, from those nations, and they asked us for forgiveness. Uh, we put that in the book. I oh, can't see that or not, but they asked us for forgiveness for selling us as Africans to America. So we're trying to educate our people that it's not just the white man or the, you know, it's everybody. Of course, when we were in Korea, I didn't mention that we were there, but when we were there, they were burning the flag of the Japanese and the Japanese president. When we were in Japan, we were part of a reconciliation where they asked for forgiveness. And so when we were in, of course, in Israel for the six months, we were with the Holocaust survivors. And so many of them have so much in their heart against the Germans. So we're doing reconciliation and trying to educate people about what's going on. This is one of my favorite ones because it's Juneteenth Wednesday. And I always ask people from Texas, uh, what is in the Capitol when you go in? And a lot of people don't know, but it's, it was, it's 50 African Americans, 52, that served in the Texas Senate and House of Representatives. And there was slave, of course, uh, people in Texas didn't know about slavery, but what happened with that? Texas was its own state, and during the time of slavery was when the translation, the, I mean, the um, transfer was legislated and promulgated for them to become a state. So I think we were on time, but this is the picture of the 50 African Americans that were running Texas. So we picked this weekend because it's close to Juneteenth to have this event to educate our people. You don't have to be, you, we don't have, we don't have to be angry. We can go to another level and um, in Christ and yeah. So we're believing for a great um, reconciliation, repentance. We're having the media come out and um, 
we're going to do interviews and this is our story because right now texas i mean tulsa oklahoma there is a lot going on just within the last two or three weeks with the excavation of the body so the news media is drawing their attention back here to say there's mass graves bodies have been dumped so we're going to go to the three cemeteries and just do we're really everywhere we go across the world do prophetic acts and um of repentance and reconciliation so we're going to go to those cemeteries yeah so they're planning to do an excavation soon they're working on it well i believe it's it's important and especially generationally there's so many aspects facets to reconciliation but um i believe it's it's on god's heart and it's um, important reconciliation generationally i believe it affects people on many levels mm -hmm. forgiveness everyone can relate everyone has been you know hurt in some way and there's opportunity to forgive and so just a powerful message the thing that i've come to realize in the midst of all of that is that the most valuable thing that comes out of reconciliation when we do it God's way is the closeness and the intimacy that we have and the love that we have for one another. And so uh, that's, wow. th that's the short version. <laughs> There's a lot of wonderful detail in this story. <laughs> what, <laughs> what a blessing. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, you, you were, are you still there, Ewart? Yes, I am here. Introduce yourself. Um, I am Ewart Ford, and I am the exact opposite of Jack Gaines. I um, study reconciliation from the academic perspective, and I just uh, attended the John Hope Franklin here in Tulsa. Anniversary Reconciliation Conference in, oh. um, in Tulsa. Most of reconciliation movements are happening among evangelicals, uh, the evangelical church, um, as far as a large um, proportion of the church in America is concerned but um there was there was a sort of and i wasn't a, a recognition of that it was um a lot of the people saw the evangelicals as a big part of the problem <clears throat> with reconciliation which which um i got into a couple of disagreements about that <laughs> <laughs> not not that point is not well taken, but it does recognize the history, but not what's being done right now. And that's where we are with it. And and our whole thing is to reconcile and to forgive. And I, again, when we learn to forgive, you know, even the word of God says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. But in the heart, some people don't want to forgive and let it go. But when we forgive, God will work on anybody's behalf, whether it's, it's racial reconciliation or if it's something that has happened to you personally. And that's the perspective that we're bringing it from. Of course, we know, as I explained all over the world that we've, that we've gone, it's every tribe <laughs> in Asia, you know, in Israel, there's all that contention. But what it is, is a, it becomes a, a pride thing mm -hmm. in different cultures. But we have to release. I, where are you? In Baton Rouge? Where did you say you were again? Yeah, I'm in Baton Rouge. We actually, I don't know if you know, what's the pastor that's flying in? His name is um, Cal uh, Rick Cal Callahan. You know Ricky Callahan? He's coming. He's flying in from there for this event. Um, well, I wish you could. I, I know the name, but I don't know him. Yeah, he's coming. In on third. Well, thank you for sharing your heart. And that's what my dad, um, you know, even when doors open to him in places, the main thing he said, we have to learn to forgive. 
and that that's biblical. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. And really, hate is hate is taught, isn't it? I mean, it's yeah, all it's um, there was a lot, there was a lot of that. Yeah, there it's was taught. a lot of of yeah. what's still happening, and and then for a lot of people, um, um, Trump is associated with whiteness. And so people translate a lot of political stuff into, into race relations that may or may not have anything to do with it. So, but even if it is, the point is that um, reconciliation is about, um, number one on the, on the part of whites, uh, for me, is being our brother's keeper and recognizing that mm -hmm. you can't worship without your brother. Mm -hmm. And on the part of Blacks, recognizing that you can't pray without your brother. Because Jesus says, if, if you come to worship and you know that your brother is not with you, you have to go make right with your brother. And when you pray, you have to forgive because if you do not forgive, neither will your heavenly father forgive you. And these are essentials that, that both groups kind of overlook. But in a, like I told them, in, I understand it as a general rule in terms of discussions and politics and whatnot. But when you come to a reconciliation conference, it's supposed to be about how do we, how do we use that repent? That. How do we accept the repentance of other people and our willingness to forgive and um, to not hold the account over people's head that comes up and beat them with it every time? Mm -hmm. Which is not to say there's not reason and ongoing injustice and stuff like that in, in mm -hmm. other things but the, uh, forgiveness means that you're letting go of that stuff was there anything mentioned there about the excavation of the graves uh, actually no i well it's possible because but but a lot of the sessions were a lot of the sessions took place in kind of like workshops where people were yeah. divided and you, you went to the ones that you, that you wanted to hear. So it, so it is entirely possible for people to have discussed that, and, but not in the sessions that we were. Thanks for sharing that. Well, yeah. that. So we'll know how to, um, you know, the forefront of our, of our event, you know, that it's totally reconciliation and forgiveness. Yeah. No, I mean, the way, what, what, what you guys are talking about and the spirit in which you are approaching it is like totally different from that, from that conference. Which is not to say, I mean, I welcome anything that fo it focuses on reconciliation, but um, you, can't, you can't have reconciliation and, and say, okay, if, let's forgive, let's get together, but here is all the reasons why really you shouldn't. Yeah. Wow. Right, so... so you know, these white folks voted for Trump and that means they still race this and that means they still white supremacists and that means so and so and um, so that's not reconciliation. Because okay. um, God is changing people's hearts Absolutely. all over the United States on Absolutely. both sides for me.